Hey there, it's Katie Jarvis with Managing the Mess. If we haven't met before, I'm a K-6 elementary art teacher, and I teach at a Title I school just outside of Washington, D.C. Today, I'm going to bring you along as I'm managing the mess. Um, I just had four back-to-back -back classes, so I've got some things to kind of clean up from the tornado that was that. Um, and I want to chat today with you about how I use music and podcast in the art room. So between music and podcast in the art room, I am team podcast. I started using this in my art room last school year and it really encouraged positive behavior. Um, this is not something that I use with kindergarten. Very occasionally I will use it with first grade and I use it pretty frequently with grades three, four, five, and six. Um, I have different podcasts that I listen to with each grade level, so I'm gonna give you my recommendations for those. But how I introduce this to students is that it is a quiet, focused um, listening time. So I'm setting students up for success that we're not listening to a podcast every single week. Um, we listen to a podcast when we have some quiet, focused work that we need to get done. So on a day when we're doing clay and there's like a lot of energy and moving around to get supplies, we're not listening to a podcast. Um, when we're doing centers, I do both my printmaking and my glazing as centers where students are moving around, that would not be a podcast day. It's a day when we have a lot of time that they're working on something and they need to stay in their location. That's when we would do a podcast. Um, I have the students do just necessary talking during a podcast. So I model that and explain, you know, you might whisper something like, please pass me a pencil um, or, you know, can you help me clean up this spill? something like that. Even if they're talking to me or I'm talking back to them, I'm modeling those whispering voices. Now, um, this works out pretty well. Um, if I do have to give the class a warning about this, I will pause the podcast and remind everyone when we get to the second warning about that, I will um, turn the podcast off. Um, and if you are going to be using a podcast in your classroom, I recommend that you have some kind of similar system. If you allow your students to talk over the podcast um, or music or whatever you're doing, um, they're going to continue to do that. Um, if they're not given some parameters, they're definitely going to push it and it's not going to be something enjoyable. Um, we try to do it so that everybody can enjoy making their art. It's really hard to make artwork when people are running around, you know, other people are arguing they're talking nonstop to you, they can make it really hard to focus. So using the podcast does help the students to kind of enjoy that quiet time and get lost in their artwork. I'm working on setting up for my classes that come in tomorrow and I've got a couple back to back. Two are printmaking back to back. So I put paper roll on the table and taped that down. And then I'm putting a plastic tablecloth on top. I'll let you know how that goes. I've never tried that exact combination before with printmaking. Um, I wanted to share that I don't use podcasts with kindergarten. I rarely do with first and second grade. Uh, podcasts are more of my routine with third, fourth, fifth, and sixth. And the first podcast that I would highly recommend to you is this podcast has fleas. It is from the Wondery app and it's a podcast within a podcast. So I think it makes for a good first podcast because my students were kind of weirded out that you couldn't see the story. They didn't understand that a podcast was something that you listen to. And within this podcast, there is a dog. Uh, his name is Waffles and he has a podcast called Dog Talk. And every time it transitions to him within the story, he sings a little jingle. And every time it transitions to the cat, the theme song from Live from the Litter Box plays. So it's easy to follow along in the podcast. It is very funny. The characters are super humorous. There's lots of puns. I think Alec Baldwin plays the fish, but there's only one season. So stay tuned. I'm going to give you a little bit more information about other podcasts that I use as well. Popping back in here to add that um, this podcast has fleas is around 20 minutes. Uh, so it's a good length of time when students are focusing on a task, but not so long that it doesn't hold their attention. I think this podcast has fleas has about nine episodes. So once I get through that, I listen to um, Melon's House Party, which is another one that I found from Wondery. It's also a podcast about dogs. Kids love animals. Um, but it has a Beauty and the Beast type of feel to it that the calendar and the couch and the chair, they all have personalities, they talk, they've got feelings. 
and they sing and the singing is really, really good in this podcast. And I think that's what makes it so fun and engaging to students. Um, the runtime is a little bit longer. I would say um, the episodes are probably around 25 minutes for that one. The podcast that I would recommend for older students is called Who's Amazing Life. Now, I got into this podcast when I was walking my dog. Um, first, there was an adult version of this podcast, and I think it was recommended that they came up with a family-friendly version as well. What it is is a mystery. Um, each one is about a different famous person, and you don't know who it is. So students need to listen for clues to guess who that famous person is. The titles are things like The Rebel, The Scribbler. So the title doesn't really give away who it is. Um, if the narrator is a male, then typically the person in the podcast um, that you're trying to guess is also a famous person that is a male. And if the narrator is female, then also it is a girl um, famous person. So I do try to alternate each and every week uh, between what we're listening to. Um, students like to guess, um, but I have them not just like shout out the answer, but as I'm walking around, they can raise their hand and whisper to me who they think it is. So it's a game within the podcast. And I think that helps encourage my students to want to kind of buy into it and listen more. Now, the episodes are a little bit on the long side. Um, I would say they're 26 minutes, 28 minutes long, something in there. Um, but they have another version of the podcast that they do every few weeks. Um, that they more recently introduced called Who's Amazing Start. Now, those episodes are about someone that is still becoming famous. So um, somebody that is younger, you know, it's they're younger than Beyonce. Um, they're people that the students know, but they're typically um, someone that's still just kind of up and coming. Um, and I think that's even more interesting to the students. And those episodes are great because they're about 15 minutes long, which is really a good sweet spot. Um, I found that when I start class with those 15 minute Who's Amazing starts, that even though I'm allowing students to talk the rest of the time throughout class, that focus time in the beginning really calms them down. So the rest of the time that we have is used in a better way and more successfully. I don't use music as much in my art room because I don't love playing DJ. Um, when students are like, can we skip this song? Or I don't like this song or they're so distracted by the music that kind of just drives me crazy. So I personally prefer the podcast, but from time to time, um, I do bring music into my art room. Um, something that I like to do is my music teacher will have our holiday sing-along um, songs on YouTube. And so I will pop that up on my screen and play that while we're making our wintry holiday projects. So the students are not only practicing for our sing-along, but they're able to enjoy their artwork and be a little bit more focused as they get lost in the music. Um, looking up those kind of like coffee shop vibe um, soundtracks uh, work out really well, I think, for the art room. Um, I've done like the fire scape, you know, where there's like a little fireplace and it, there's music playing and, you know, snow is falling out of the window. That is a good vibe. Uh, not something to do every week. Um, but definitely something fun to try out. So look those up on YouTube. Um, whenever I am doing music, I will um, add the video to my Google Slides. So you go to insert and video and then put the YouTube link right into the Google Slides. That way there are not ads popping up uh, because that's something also, you know, with the music you need to be watching out for. I don't pay for the podcast that I was using. I don't have the paid version of that, um, but I found that the commercials that do come up are typically for other Wondery podcasts. So um, I think the commercial we've been hearing most often lately is for the new Cat in the Hat podcast they had. So it's nothing that is, you know, a bad taste or political or anything you wouldn't want playing in your classroom. Um, I have been using music quite a bit with my kindergarten and first grade as a transition. Um, I have a big giant visual timer. Some of my students have needed kind of like a timer countdown to the cleanup timer. Um, so we've played a song in some classes to help transition. So they know that when the song is done, that they should start um, to clean up. So one that I really like for that um, is a song called Tour of the States. You can find that on uh, YouTube where they're singing a song and 
simultaneously someone is drawing all of the states in America and they are mentioning what the capitals are. So if you played this week after week, it'd be a great learning opportunity, not only for yourself, but for your students. Um, also, Sesame Street has a song called Make Your Own Art. It's from um, a longer show that they had, like a special. But that song is super cute. They also, um, I might be messing the name up here, but they have like a song that's, and it's again from Sesame Street, but it's Will I Am. And it's called What I Am. That's a really cute, positive song to use if you need that cleanup transition song. Um, I like to play maybe, you know, a song or two to get them in the mood for a certain project. Um, the younger grades don't mind listening kind of to the same thing over and over um, so they can really enjoy it. But I think just a few, you know, two or three songs and then the rest of the time is working because you don't want them to get too wound up from what you're using. That's why I kind of prefer the podcast because I feel like it's a more leveled reaction I get out of the students versus them kind of getting um, a little bit hyped up about listening to certain songs or music. You also don't want to do anything that is going to offend parents or you're going to have complaints about just to make your life easier. After you've taught your lesson and students are independently working, for that first five or 10 minutes, if you have even a read aloud from YouTube playing or just a song or two or you do a podcast, it sets the tone for how students are going to behave for the rest of the class. If you can get them a little taste of what it feels like to get engaged in their artwork and be calm and focused, that's going to play out through the rest of your class. It certainly has for me and improved my student behavior. Now, if you're looking for more tips and tricks for art teachers, make sure that you are subscribed to this channel. I've been making videos for art teachers just like you every single week. Next, you're going to want to check out this video here.